Beginning on August 26, 2020, I had the opportunity to visit three parks in three different states. It may not seem that impressive, but considering how 2020 has been, I would say that's not too bad. So in this video, I want to talk about my planning process, what it could have been, how much the trip cost, and what came to fruition. When I first heard about Keys to the Kingdom, my initial thought was that I wasn't going to be able to go. I live in Kansas. That's a long drive. But then I got the idea of going on a coaster road trip. I know I'm not the first to do one of these, but it was my first time doing something like this on my own, and I am so glad that I did. First step was finding parks along the way that I wanted to go to. Kentucky Kingdom was in for sure, and since I love Silver Dollar City so much, a trip to Dollywood was something that we wanted to do, and it's within driving distance of Kentucky Kingdom. So my initial plan was Silver Dollar City to Dollywood, then head up to Kentucky Kingdom for Keys to the Kingdom, Holiday World, Six Flags St. Louis, and end the trip with Worlds of Fun. I was happy with that plan at the time. The only problem was that I forgot that parks have operating schedules. So after nixing the two northern Missouri parks, Six Flags St. Louis and Worlds of Fun, we were left with Silver Dollar City, Dollywood, Kentucky Kingdom, and Holiday World. However, in my planning, I was not wise. I wanted to spend two days at Dollywood since it was my first time at the park. I didn't realize until the trip had begun that Holiday World was hosting Hollywood Nights. The only way to get two days at Dollywood was to not go to Holiday World due to operating schedules. With the frustration of trying to find parks that will be open when I need them to be, I turned to Cedar Point. We then planned the trip with a visit to Kings Island and Cedar Point. This plan was ruined after Kings Island changed the operating schedules. The stops that we did end up making were Nashville, Dollywood, Kentucky Kingdom, and Silver Dollar City. Was it what I originally wanted? No, but I was happy with it. Next, I would like to talk about the finances of the trip. For the original plan, the two of us were looking at about $1,100 a person. The second iteration we calculated at about the same. For the final plan, and what we actually ended up doing, I planned for $1,000. Our budget included ticket prices, hotel prices, gas, and food. Ticket prices were one of the easiest things to calculate since these can be found on park websites. The most that we ended up paying for a park was Dollywood at $100 for two days, but at $50 a day, it wasn't that bad of a deal. I will be upfront, since Silver Dollar City is our home park, we own season passes and did not include this in the trip budget. For hotel prices, we estimated $100 a night. We stayed at three hotels over the course of five nights. The other nights we spent at our grandparents' house in Missouri. Gotta make it as cheap as possible. The total miles for the trip was around 2,146. In terms of gas, we estimated around 28 miles per gallon and the cost of gas at $2.50 a gallon. Total gas in price per person we estimated at $96. For food, we estimated about $13 a day for eight days for a grand total of $104. In total, the two of us spent $1,224.52, including souvenirs. That comes out to about $612 a person. Considering the amount we were planning to spend, this was a pleasant surprise. Now, enough talk about money. First stop was Nashville. We left Kansas on August 26 and arrived in Nashville late that night. The next day was dedicated to exploring Nashville and making our way to Pigeon Forge. After we checked out of the hotel, we got breakfast at Lady Bird Taco. The food was good and decently priced, a lot better than the cost of theme park food. After that, we found a parking spot in town and attempted to make our way to all the bars. It turns out that we were walking in the wrong direction and found ourselves by Vanderbilt University. We got lost and were trying to make it back to the car before the time on our parking spot was up. One of our stops on our unplanned route was to a restaurant to get a drink, since we were both super hot. Little did we know that we would get the souvenir cups. All we needed was a drink, and that was the first restaurant in sight, and we both got the first souvenirs of the trip. Neither of us are 21, so we didn't go into any of the bars, but instead explored the stores on that stretch. Because window shopping is fun, especially in a tourist town. To round out our visit to Nashville, we stopped by the Parthenon. Unfortunately, we got there after their operating hours, so we weren't able to go inside. 
In my opinion, the Parthenon was the coolest thing that we did in Nashville. Next time I find myself in Nashville, the Parthenon is a must-do. The 28th and the 29th we spent at Dollywood. I do plan on making a review for this park in the future, but for now I will say that it is a phenomenal park. We bought a two-day ticket for $100. At $50 a day, that's not a bad deal. I was glad that we got a two-day ticket because the first day that we were there, Lightning Rod was closed for the majority of the day and we didn't get to ride it. If you want to see my review of Lightning Rod, I will link it in the card above. The rest of the rides at the park are amazing and the atmosphere is one of the best. In terms of parks in the US, Dollywood is probably one of the best for everyone. I did think that its sister park of Silver Dollar City has a more cohesive theme throughout the park. At Dollywood, we were able to get on all of the coasters, including Lightning Rod, watch a few shows, and have some cinnamon bread. One thing that we were not able to do was ride the train, which I was hoping for. We were off on our timing and didn't get around to it, but next time I am at Dollywood, I will make it a point to ride it. One thing to mention is that Mystery Mine is running one party per car, which slows down the line. It was one of the longest lines in the park that we waited for because of the way they are social distancing. While we were in Nashville, we found out about a hurricane that could have impacted our trip. Luckily, there was no rain at the park. The second day we had considered doing some of the other attractions around Pigeon Forge, but we decided to go back to Dollywood on the 29th, which was our original plan. I am super glad that we went to Dollywood. Looking back, we could have possibly done one day at this park and went to Hollywood Nights instead, but we would have missed out on Lightning Rod, which is my current favorite roller coaster. On our second day at Dollywood, we decided to leave the park early and get on the road to Louisville, Kentucky for Keys to the Kingdom. Once again, we arrived in Louisville late at night and stayed at the most expensive hotel of the trip. But the next day we went to Keys to the Kingdom at Kentucky Kingdom. This was my favorite part of the trip. It's what made me plan the trip and it was well worth it. I do have a review of Keys to the Kingdom that is in the card. At the event, there was extended ride time, a YouTuber Q&A, restricted access, and free food. I spent $50 on the tickets, and they were absolutely worth it. The park itself wasn't as good as Dollywood or Silver Dollar City, but it was the experience of Keys to the Kingdom that made it worth it. One of my favorite things about Keys to the Kingdom was getting to meet fellow coaster enthusiasts. I am the only enthusiast that I know around where I live, so it was really great to meet people who have the same hobby as I do. August 31st was a travel day. We slept in that morning and made our way over to our grandparents' house in Springfield, Missouri. It was nice to get to see them again, as well as having a place to stay for free. If either of you are watching this, thank you for letting us stay with you. September 1st, we made our way from Springfield to Branson to visit my home park of Silver Dollar City. Like I previously said, we have season passes to this park, so we were able to get in for free. Like with Dollywood, I plan to make a review of this park as well. While we were at the park, we were able to get a ride on all the coasters, with the exception of their kitty coaster, Grand Exposition Coaster. We were also able to see the saloon show, which has been moved to an outdoor theater. I am glad to see that they still have the saloon show, since it is one of the more unique experiences at the park. The park was not very busy the day that we went, which is awesome to see since the park seems to be growing in popularity. On several of the coasters, we were the only ones on board. On Time Traveler, we were able to get a unique experience that I didn't know they could do. Okay, so we got off our second ride on Time Traveler. So one thing to mention is that there is like no one in line for it, which I've basically never seen. Um, so you can sit anywhere you want. So we sat in the back row and then there's a concert going on at Echo Hollow amphitheater so the ride offs were like hey do you want a silent ride you won't know when you're launching and we're like sure why not so none of the sound effects were on which was cool so like station totally quiet not a sound um yeah when we launched it just came out of nowhere it was really fun never seen something like that didn't know they could do something like that so that was super fun 
At the park, we got to ride Mystic River Falls, their new raft ride, and to end out the night, we watched the Martins in Echo Hollow Amphitheater. They were good, but you could definitely tell that they were for the older crowd. So, my thoughts on the trip? Amazing. Despite the changes to my planning and the pandemic as a whole, the trip was well worth it. I hope to do something similar to this trip next year. It was cheaper than I was anticipating, but we were still able to have some great experiences. So have you gone on a road trip like this? Or, if you were to plan the ideal road trip, where would you go? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. God bless.